Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April, I mean April, <laughs> wow, wow, June <laughs> 1st. After the weather today, yes, it does feel like uh, April, but uh, June 1st. Uh, to my left is Selectman Phil Bean, Selectman Mary Louise Wolseley, Selectman Jim Waddell, Town Manager Fred Wright. Not uh, Fred Wright. Fred Wright. <laughs> Jeez, I'm doing well tonight, aren't I? Yeah. It's going to be fun tonight. It is, yeah. <laughs> the, the power of the office has gone to his head. That's it. Rick, Rick, Rick Griffin is, uh, could not be here tonight. So the first thing we have is, is uh, a public hearing. With under the provisions of RSA 31-95B3A to apply and accept for and expend unanticipated monies in the amount of $10,000 or more under the Piscataqua Region Estuaries Partnership Grant Program. So, opening the hearing. Opening the hearing. Here we go. What time? At 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, okay. <laughs> Close enough. Hi, my name is Rayanne Dione, and I'm the Conservation Coordinator. Jason Bashan, Town Planner. Um, so we're here tonight to um, share with you a grant opportunity that recently came up. Um, it's through the uh, Piscataqua Region Estuary Partnership. Um, this, um, they recently put out a grant opportunity for several different projects. Um, one of them happens to be assessing a community's um, eligibility for the National Flood Insurance community rating system program um, <clears throat> so this program is a voluntary incentive based um, program where a community gets credit for activities that we do to protect ourselves against flooding um, <clears throat> the as a kind of reward for doing that, um, flood insurance um, policyholders can receive a discount. So we're trying to get in kind of at that first level, um, which would um, provide people a 5% discount. Um, there's a total of 10 levels. Each level that you go up, go up you get an additional 5%. Um, <clears throat> This happens to be great timing. Um, Jason and I have um, tasked ourselves for 2015 with looking into Hampton's um, eligibility for CRS. Um, it was interesting, we learned last fall that Hampton actually is the number one flood insurance policy holder in the state of New Hampshire. We have a little over um, 1,750 policy holders. Also, as a community, we pay over one and a half million dollars a year in um, policy premiums. Yeah. So I think there's a great benefit uh, to joining this program. So um, the way that the grant is um, kind of broken down is it's a one-to-one -one match grant. So they are offering $10,000 worth of funds. Um, our match, it can be 75% um, in-kind, meaning hours that Jason and I or anyone else who volunteers with us can count towards. That would be towards the $7,500 part of our 10,000. And then the other piece is $2,500 in cash. Um, or, yeah, cash funds. Um, <coughs> We would be looking to work with the Rockingham Planning Commission. They are a great resource um, for helping, and have helped um, other communities like Rye. Rye was in the CRS program. Um, they, for whatever reason, have recently fallen out, but are actually trying to get back in. <clears throat> but um, the Rockingham Planning Commission uh, is a great resource and can provide us with some technical assistance in determining um, what activities we've already done that can we can get credited for and maybe some other activities we need to do. So um, Jason can talk about the funding piece a little bit more. Yep. Um, so earlier in, in the month of May, we went before the Hampton Beach Village District and they graciously offered $1,250 of the 2500 that we need for the cash non-federal uh, match funds, cash funds. 
Um, beyond that, um, at the last Hampton Beach Area Commission meeting, I, I mentioned this program to them, discussed it with them a bit, and they offered $625, so half of the $1,250. So what we're in need of at this point is an additional $625 to equal that $2,500 cash match that we need to provide. So that's where we stand on that. And um, you know we're hoping for your approval this evening to apply for this uh, to, to pursue this grant and if awarded the grant to proceed with uh, working toward getting into the CRS program working sure. at Rocking and Planning Commission. Yeah. Very good. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak on this matter? Again, anybody else from the public want to speak on this matter? <coughs> Hearing none, I will bring it back to the board. Time. Time is... 706 so we'll close out the public hearing portion of this and we'll bring it back to the board okay good mary louise yes great work um this is for this year is there an option do you think to apply for the grant in future years so we can gain another percentage off another five percent or whatever it is off can we continue doing this till we reach the 20 percent so this grant um, cycle goes through um, July of 2016 right so we have one year mm -hmm. um, to use those funds um, prep it, their grant opportunities, um, it fluctuates. They don't always have it every single year, but um, certainly if we um, you know, found that we had some additional work at the end of this um, grant round and it um, was up again, we would definitely apply. I mean, it's, it's a great... Well, I'm thinking if... Uh, the, I thought the max you could get with the CRS is 20% off your flood policy. Uh, no, you, it can go up to 45%. Okay, so we can basically keep working in increments <coughs> on this certainly to help reduce the flood policy rates mm -hmm. yes so yep. this is a, like a first step certainly yeah, if you will that. yep yep okay i just want to clarify that for the public because it's certainly in our best interest and also in the public's best interest to uh, try to keep the rates down a little bit mm -hmm. certainly okay great thank you very much for your work on that Phil, do you require a motion on this, Mr. Chairman? We will. Uh, I'd like to, if Jim would like to speak first. Great. I'm, I'm going to throw the motion out there under provisions of RSA 31 colon 95 small b Roman 3 alpha to apply for, accept, and expend unanticipated monies in the amounts of $10,000 or more under the Piscataqua Region Estuary Partnership Grant Program. Thank you, sir. I'll second. Okay. Jim? Second. And great. Uh, what, what kind of things do you have to do? <laughs> there's Just um, in brief, there's a, a long range of activities. Um, some of the kind of easier ones are some public outreach, um, having information at the library about, um, you know, things that homeowners can do to protect themselves against flooding, um, doing, um, having our, um, the firm maps, the maps that show what um, flood hazard zone you're in, um, readily available, also having it online um, on our GIS system. And then there are more extensive things that you do to protect your infrastructure from flooding that, you know, we would do as a town. So we could maybe go to level one this year can you only go one level per year or could you try to knock um, out or is it impossible you, so it's yes yeah, so the um each there's a each level it, it is backwards you start at level 10 okay. is zero and then they're in 500 point increments right so um it's a matter of tallying the points and you know if for some reason we were to magically have a thousand points we could go straight to eight okay. and skip over right. nine but right. um it's not I, I believe there's like 1200 communities in the community rating system and there's only one that's in the class one so the initial couple i think are attainable getting all the way to one is is a lot of work mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. definitely something that you know we could we could strive for sounds really good and, and i mean obviously needed in hampton for sure yeah. Yeah. i have one more quick question before we vote well the letters that we'll be sending out in conjunction with the precinct on the flood policies and so forth will they will that help you at all will that it could count to um, our, our public outreach piece. We'd have to, to yeah. check, but mm -hmm. things like that. Because <laughs> we're getting, reaching out to yeah. people and letting them that know. That could be another component of sure. what you're doing this year with the grant. Yep, Certainly. so we'd want to, you know, okay. log that and Good. make note of it. Fred, do you have anything else you want to add to it? No, sir. Okay, so we have a motion and seconded. Oh. Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
All right. I, I was oh. just going to say one other thing. Did you need to make a motion on the additional 625 so that we reach our yes, 2500 as well? Okay. So. Yes, I also move that we uh, authorize the expenditure of $625 in order to cover our share mm -hmm. of of help that's twenty five hundred dollars twenty five hundred dollars match yeah non federal I'll, I'll cash second that. match I'm second okay. all those in favor unanimous great great, great job thank you. thank you very much okay. great job okay. next part is public comment is there anybody from the public that would like to speak <clears throat> Mike Pierce uh, eighty four Lock Road um, I go down to the end of High Street frequently as Mr Bean can attest to and uh, as we've all been aware of the seawall there is falling apart that first section is really in bad shape and I was down there oh, a week or two ago maybe three weeks ago and I noticed that there were concrete blocks on top of the uh, seawall and one of the construction fellows said that there had been a young person there on the seawall and a chunk of it fell out and he almost fell over down into the ocean side of the seawall on the rocks <coughs> which would not have been good but now that we've got the barricade rocks or blocks on top of the seawall that will probably prevent that from happening if they're not really adventurous but I'm a little concerned that that section seems to be really falling apart the concrete seems to be just falling out of it more so if you look all the way down in front of the, the park itself that looks reasonably good to an amateur person like myself I don't know anything about seawalls I'm not an expert on it at all but they look like it's been holding re really pretty good but the sections right at the end of the parking lot are really pretty sad and uh, one of them in particular and I was thinking being an oddly construction company still has a lot of equipment there we might contact them and see if they can give that a redo of some sort repair job to keep the chunks from falling out of that one second section in particular so because they still have a lot of their equipment down there the oddly construction who's working on the state's contract and I know that when I was a selectman we mentioned that and I don't know if we discussed it very much at all about piggybacking on the state to have that area fixed along there but I don't remember all the details about that now because it didn't seem to as I recall didn't go very very far but if we contacted oddly they might give us a, a little bit of a deal better deal than if we have somebody come in separately because they'd have to bring all their equipment in so I would just suggest if you will that uh, maybe somebody from the town contact them and see what they can do at a reasonable price maybe and and if they can't do it for a reasonable price at least tell us what we need to do because if it's really expensive it may have to be some kind of a warrant article at some point in the future but right now it doesn't have anything to ask okay thank you thank you anybody else from the public <coughs> mr preston <laughs> Good evening, Charlie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, board. I just want to briefly touch on uh, looking at your consent agenda number three, use of town property. I would just want to report two weeks ago at the uh, Dread meeting, the Dread Spring meeting. After three years, I, I think we're gaining some traction on the veterans' plates and the state parks' plates. They think they might try that this fall. I came to you first, the HBAC, the village district, and Dread. And um, now Nancy Styles is working with Fred Bryce, and they might give that a shot. So it's, it's nice to see we're gaining traction. You know, people, residents and that have those veterans plates or have the state parks plates, they can patronize places like Bernie's, Millie's, Ocean Gaming, McGurk's, the Sea Catch, the Boardwalk, the Ashworth, Ron's, Little Jack's, without worrying about a ticket. And this is again tied to days of school. So the state still makes the revenue in season weekends and holidays i think it'll be a win-win for everybody the state the town and the and bread what i actually want to touch is i've been working for three or four years on the little corner of brown and ashworth because of the way the cars park you have a little dead spot it's about 20 by 20. i've been trying to get with the hpac and with the rec department a bus shelter because you'll see kids now that'll in the rain like a day like today they'll hide underneath the uh, bank machine across the street to try to get out of the northeast rain it's cold it's raw 
So with that spread is dead, I've been trying to get this done with, with Diane and with John Nyan. We haven't had any success yet. Um, we're trying to get some bike, bike racks down there that these kids can go to, but there's a need for parking for the kids that go to high school and the college students, you know. And what I'd like to ask, I did a little survey this past week of the parking down there, and up in North Beach, the end of Winter Cutter, uh, excuse me, High Street, there's about 10 scooter spots. I didn't even know that existed. And what it states is under 250 cc. Um, I mentioned it to Diane, you know, a few weeks ago, and then with the paint crews were down there, and she goes, maybe they could do it. But anyway, I don't know if they didn't have time. What I'm asking is a little support to consider it, and if they don't have it in their budget, I'd be glad to get on there and paint it myself. Uh, and I can measure out what you got up the other end of town, and I'd be more than happy to do it with the direction of them or whatever. But, you know, the only thing I'd say is let's, if we did these spots, they'd say just put a little requirement on it that the kids have to be students of Winnicott kind of High School, that would mean the four towns, work at the beach, or they go to a state university and work at the beach. And then, you know, because if you can police, if, if the other end, you can say they're under 250 cc, obviously there's a sign here that says it. So if that can be done, we could do it down there. And that car is just sitting there empty, so I'm just asking you for some support. And um, if you can talk to Diana or for someone, else, like I said, if they don't have the money in the budget, I'll gladly paint it myself. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Anybody else from the public? Seeing nobody else, I'll bring it to the board for announcements and community calendar. Jim. Uh, nothing really, except that uh, I was down the beach on Saturday. It was a beautiful day, and there were tons of people down there. It looked like everybody was having a good time. Businesses were doing well, and it was just uh, really exciting to see. You know, summer's here, summer's starting, and let's support the beach. <coughs> All right. All right. Um, just two quick comments, basically, on the uh, points that have just been brought up. Uh, regarding Mr. Pierce, I am concerned about that section of wall. Is that something we should post regardless of what quotes or whatever we get? Should we have that posted, you know, danger, keep off? Because I, it's, it's not in good condition. We can, but it becomes a tractor a nuisance. Oh, That's well. why we put the Jersey barriers on top of it so people could oh, climb up on it. Okay. And the stairs, I've had complaints about the stairs at Joe Billy Brown Park. Um, and I think we've been sent a picture, I know I saw a picture, that somebody needs to just take a crowbar or something and fix those bottom two stairs. People are going to kill themselves trying to go down this stairs. didn't get approval from the state to do the work until today. <sighs> Otherwise, so, the approval we asked for was to pre prevent us from having to file a wetlands permit to do the work. <clears throat> And they've agreed finally that Just we don't to jack need to do up that. A couple of, oh, good yeah, God. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, and the last one, really quickly, and I appreciate Mr. Preston's comments, but I don't think, and I, I heard the discussion at the meeting that the uh, that was held at the, the beach uh, two weeks ago. I don't see why veterans in the state of New Hampshire should have to go and pay 85 bucks for veterans' plates. It seems to me that veterans on a on an as-needed basis should be able to pull in. I'm really not all that hysterically excited about getting extra revenue for the state, but I certainly think that any veteran in this community and in this state should have the right to park in those spaces. I, it's just a comment. Thank you. Mr. Bean. All good, sir. Thank you. Very good. Next, we have the consent agenda. The first one is the entertainment licenses and posted permits for North Beach Bar and Grill. Second one is parade and public gathering licenses for Granite State Quest on 7-11-15 and reach the beach on 9-19-15. Number three is use of town property, Ashworth Ave parking lot for reach the beach on 9-19-15. Number four is termination of a la leased land lease <laughs> for 17 F Street to Sea Curl LLC and the lease land lease is 17 F Street C Curl LLC. Number six is the Hampton Cemetery deed for McGuire One Family Trust. Uh, number seven is a request with no objection for an outdoor service of alcohol, Smutty Nose Beer Garden, 105 Toll Farm Road for the Smutty Nose 5K on 
Number eight is Chucky's flight permission to clean an area between the bridge and the breakwater at Sun Valley. Number nine is a raffle permit for the Hampton Arts Network. Number ten is a dance hall permit for SNS hotels. And that's it. I will be happy to move the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. I will second it. Motion and second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Approval of the minutes. May 11th. So moved. So moved. Motion. Second. Second. Any, all those in favor? I believe I wasn't here. I got You're abstaining? Abstain. So three, one abstain. May 18th. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. May 18th, non public. So Sealed moved. minutes. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Tough Appointments. Job, Rusty. Tough job. I know it's going good. <laughs> uh, Donna Bennett, tax collector. Good evening, Donna. On this beautiful June day, I'm freezing. <laughs> yeah, but my lawn is green. That's why I call it April instead of <laughs> June. <laughs> Uh, definitely more like April. Thank you for having me. Tonight's my annual deeding meeting. Um, this deeding results from a lien that we placed on June 6, 2013 for the 2012 levy. So what we're talking about tonight is just for 2012. We mailed 57 letters of impending deed, about the same as last year, I think a little bit less actually. And currently, there are 35 remaining properties on the deeding list, on the list that you have that I gave you. Mm -hmm. um, property number 35 and 36 can be crossed off. Those are all paid as of today. So there's 35 more properties that are, we're still waiting for payment on. I'm about a week early. They actually have until next Monday to pay, because that's the actual deeding date, but you all don't meet next Monday, so mm -hmm. that's why I'm here a little bit early, just kind of looking for some direction from you. And um, normally I request to postpone the deeding to a, date, uh, a later date in September, but after talking with Fred, there's some properties that we're thinking that it might be time to go ahead and mm -hmm. deed if you are... Um, if you wish to do that at this time. Um, property numbers 17 through 25 and property number 29 and 31. Fred and the building department are about recommending, well, the properties from uh, 17 to 25, Fred and the building department are looking to uh, go ahead and deed those properties. And then there, the couple other ones, um, number 29 and 31 would be um, donate to, to cons conservation land. It's marshland, and um, I think they're both marshland. Yes, they are. Okay. And there's one other property I was um, thinking that you might want to add to that list, and that would be number five. That's a small parking area behind the old Lupo's mm -hmm. building. Yes. So that one, may, you may want to add that as well. It's a very small parcel. Um, as far as the rest of them go, after, uh, they have till next Monday, a lot of these will get paid by then. Mm -hmm. There'll probably be about um, 10 or so. Usually I end up with about 10 or so that, that just don't get paid. So um, I'm hoping with your direction that you will go ahead and let me work out a payment agreement with them. The last ones we did last year worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think all but one followed through. And the one that didn't, um, after speaking with Fred, we really wouldn't recommend taking that property because I think it's a, a bit of a hazard for the town. So... Um, we're just going to kind of leave that one on the books for a while. Mm -hmm. And right now we have a little over $3 million outstanding in, um, uh, no, I'm sorry. We have $1 million outstanding in um, uncollected liens. Just a little bit over $1 million total. So I'm just looking for some direction from you all tonight. Fred, do you want to? Speak on this first. Okay. I'd be delighted to, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do agree with the the tax collector with regards to uh, the property listed on number five. Um, it's a piece of property that's ex extremely small. I mean, the tax bill is forty-two dollars. It's a uh, <clears throat> a fractional lot. Um, number twenty-nine is a wet piece of wet wetland. The taxes on that are ninety-four dollars and sixteen cents. 
uh, that should go to conservation. Mm -hmm. And number 31, the taxes are $44.24. That's out in the middle of the marsh. Uh, you might be able to get there, but I think probably you best wait until winter when it's frozen, because otherwise you won't get a close examination. Uh, properties numbers 17 through 25 are perennial. Uh, they are constantly $100,000 in arrears every single year. Um, and uh, we, we proceeded to attempt to take them last year, and uh, they came in and paid. Uh, they normally request, I believe, that they ask for an extension until September, yes. and then we do some chasing in September. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I think it's time. These are all rental properties. These are not, there's no owners living on these. The owners don't live on these properties. Mm. They're all inherited properties. Uh, they're rentals for the summer. Uh, so... $100,000 is a lot of money for the taxpayers of this town to keep on mm -hmm. holding all the time yeah. for these particular lots. So we recommend that you, and the lots are not in that good condition, that you take them. Mm. Currently, those um, properties are, with all the interest fees and principal, about 150000 in arrears. Mayor okay. Luis? No, no questions. Thank you. Phil? No, sir. Sure. No. Do you need a motion to concur with the uh, tax collector and town manager on the identified parcels, or do we need the to board has to approve the taking? So you do need a motion. Uh, and it would be effective Monday if not paid by Monday. Are we doing this? I thought we were going to enter non-public with the tax collector, or do we not need to do that? You don't need to do that. You've identified them by the number on her list. Okay. Um, all that you need to do is authorize the tax collector to execute the deed and give it to the Board of Selectmen following next Monday. Because deed. Monday's the last day they can pay, I yes. believe. Yes, a deed or deeds. Well, be, there would be deeds in this case. Yes. It is plural, yeah. I will uh, accept uh, that as a motion uh, using the manager's wording. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. And then the, the, if any of other properties, would it be okay if, if I let you know on Monday or Tuesday mm -hmm. how, how we did? And um, on the following ones... We'll that I'm going those. to go ahead and work out the uh, right. payment agreements. Um, like we've done in the years past. Like we've done in the year past. And, and we can either revisit the deeding this year, yeah. if it doesn't look like I'm getting anywhere with them, or we, can, we they will definitely come up again next year. Good. Now, number so, five, just quickly. Yes. Is that a multi-owner parcel? Is that it's, one that's split up in yes, four or five ways? Yes, it's split into, each one has their own parcel. Okay. So, so it's not going to affect the other owners, right. okay. but it is a portion down of there yeah, parcel, of yeah. a parking it's, area. I know the area. That's why I... Yeah. 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 So, okay. Anything else? No, thank you, Donna. No. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Next one is Chief of Police. Chief of Police. Not tonight. Emergency management director tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I am thrilled about. <laughs> Does that mean you brought us an emergency? Um, well, the whole goal is to prepare for the emergencies, <laughs> and, and that's what we're here for. Um, for those that aren't aware, we are required by law to have a hazard mitigation plan in the community. Uh, we completed our last one back in May of 12, and it was run four years, so we are due to expire in June of 16, so the application period uh, for the grants is open now. We've actually uh, been approved for our grant. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, what I'd like to do, there's a number of points I have to make sure reflect in our minutes to make sure that this grant uh, is so acceptable. And read it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read the letter I sent to the chairman uh, back on 27 May, just to, that'll cover most of the points yep. we need to have on the record. Uh, this is dated May 27th uh, to Rick Griffin, Chairman of the Hampton Board of Selectmen, from Richard Sawyer, Hampton Emergency Management Director. Update of Hazard Mitigation Plan. The current ha Hazard Mitigation Plan for the Town of Hampton is due to expire on June 9th, 2016, requiring an update. Our application to the Federal Emergency Management Agency has been approved to update our plan utilizing grant funds and a 25% cost share to the Town in the amount of $2,500. The Hampton Hazard Mitigation Plan is a planning tool to be used by the town as well as other local, state, and federal governments in their effort to reduce the effects from natural and man-made hazards. Having previously served on a plan committee, it is a daunting task. 
The town's previous plan was developed utilizing a private consulting firm that specialized in plan development. I would recommend the same course of action during this update and would further recommend Hubbard Consulting LLC as our consultant on this update. Hubbard was the consultant on our previous plan and has an intimate knowledge of the issues we face in Hampton as a coastal tourist destination. If there are any further questions from the board, please advise me and I will respond as quickly as possible. I did not receive any further questions. I don't know if each of you received a copy of this memo. Okay, I can provide copies if you would like. Uh, basically what I'm <coughs> seeking tonight is uh, permission to move forward uh, with acceptance of the grant and also to uh, authorize the chairman and the vice chair to be the signatory authorities. There will be quarterly reports required for me to submit to FEMA as the emergency management director, but it has to come from the board of selectmen as one of the signatories. We can do the route of all five signing every quarterly report, but that becomes cumbersome. Um, and basically it's the expenditures that we, we have several meetings as we progress, and there are some associated costs with a consultant. And then when we need to file our quarterly reports, we have to report what progress we've made and what expenditures we've made. It would just be simpler if I had one person mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to track down the five signatures. Okay. In addition to that, it will, uh, if that is authorized, that signature will have to be done in front of a notary. So we won't be signing anything tonight. I'll have to, if, if the board uh, decides that's what we're going to do, I'll schedule that uh, with the chairman at a future date. Okay. There was. Uh, grant from whom? FEMA. It's a FEMA grant. It's a FEMA grant, and it is met. Just so you understand how the process works, when the federal government decides they're going to uh, put out grants, they find a, a statewide authority. So in a lot of law enforcement grants, it will be the New Hampshire Department of Justice. But with you, uh, emergency management, it's the New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency, emergency Management under the Department of Safety. Would this have, would this give us any credit, having this in place, would this give us any credit from the CRS that the town planner and conservation coordinator were just talking about? It may very well. So we can maybe put another little... Notch in the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I it's agree. eligible, why not? Yep. Okay, and does this have anything to do with the state, anything to do with state property, anything to do with the evacuation route for the state? Any, or is this strictly weather-driven, or is it? Man-made or natural disasters are covered, or natural covered by this plan. So this is the plan from okay. several years ago. But for uh, example, 1A? Does that factor in? 1A for was the washout for some reason, either natural or man-made, something exploded, something like right. that. We identify those critical infrastructure yeah. needs, and it does include sometimes the evacuation process. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Selectman Bean. Yeah, I would uh, make a motion uh, pending further discussion for the authorization to expend the $2,500 share, the 25%, and to accept and receive monies associated with the grant, and to require the uh, um, board to accept that the chairman or vice chairman sign per the uh, sign notarized and initial grant agreement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. I have nothing. Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you for your time. Thank you, All Chief. right. Thank you, Chief. Next thing on the list is the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I only have one thing on the uh, on the agenda, but I have a couple of other things I need to do. Thank you. Um, Thank you sir. The board will have completed uh, information on June 15, 2015, on the North Beach parking and other issues addressed in our prior public hearings on that action. You should have that after tomorrow's meeting of department heads, and you will have that in your hand. Uh, I'm hoping that, uh, uh, given that, you will also have the South Beach material in your hand for your review sometime after Tuesday, but before your next meeting. In addition, we've received a request from uh, an individual who owns property on Ancient Highway, uh, who apparently has had his property surveyed and finds that his building is partially on town land. That's no surprise. Well, not really. It's those things happen. Uh, <laughs> he would like to know if the board uh, would entertain, uh, subject to proper plans and so forth, uh, his purchase of the land that the building sits on. Uh, for I think for probably for obvious reasons. Um, and if you if you indicate to me that you would consider that, then I will move ahead and get the paperwork and so forth and get that to the board for your review. So moved. Philip. Oh, but I have a quick question. I'll second it. Yeah. 
Ma'am. The land that his building is sitting on is adjacent to what? To whom? Is it adjacent to town land? Is it adjacent to another property? It faces the Atlantic and the property, the, the building apparently is partially on the beach property. That oh, we okay. So, okay. It, in other words, it was positioned too far forward is my understanding. Because we've had a number of surveys, especially at the, the main beach, and found that Joe's garage was on Harry's lot. <laughs> so I was wondering if there was another party who could cause us problems. No, I don't think so. This one apparently seems to be just over okay. the line of okay. the town property. So okay. uh, he would like to do something about it. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, the fire chief approached me um, this past week, and you will remember in our um, zeal to get through the issue of permits and fees and so on and so forth, uh, we, in, we uh, in fact, amended, or the board amended, a large array of fees for the fire department. Right. That apparently is going to cause a problem because uh, <laughs> um, it's going to affect the precinct's ability to pay for fireworks. Uh, in the past, um, they had paid a set fee, and uh, this will increase that fee substantially. Uh, the fire chief was... Uh, Wondering if I would bring this to the board and ask you to um, consider uh, going back to the old fee for the remainder of this year and then working with the precinct to, to come up with a different fee. That um, way, their budget, which is in their, their contracts, which are three years in length, this is the third year, uh, would be outside of their budgeted uh, appropriation. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Would it be easier and more sensible to exempt the precinct from the price increase for this year only it instead would. of going through the whole big fiddle faddle it would except the statute requires you when you change a fee mm -hmm. you have to have a public hearing hmm that's exactly what I said. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, it's required well, we now. Wouldn't be changing a fee. We'd be exempting them for That's the current change. Oh well, I'm trying. So, I'm I know trying. I tried that too. So oh, okay. uh, I just would like to know if the board would like me to make up the proper paperwork and get I, to you for your next meeting. I hate to lose the increased revenue right across the board for all those fees. This will only be for one year. No, no. This is only for one item for one year. One item. One for item. One year. Which okay. is the fireworks shoot. Okay, cost. so it's not going to wipe out the fee, the oh, increase. No. Thank we'll you. We'll go back okay. and revert that one fee back to the okay. previous. Okay, you made fee, me happy. And then work with the board, uh, the, the two boards, to get it uh, changed for next year. Okay. I make a recommendation. We accept your recommendation. I make a motion. We recommend. <laughs> we accept your recommendation. Thank you. Uh, second. Uh, yeah. Okay. Louise, all those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, the building inspector came and talked to me the other day. Uh -oh. uh, this is about one of our um, properties, um, our former properties. That was a lease, lease purchase property down on uh, 16th Street. And uh, there's a problem in that um, there is a requirement on the property that no fence can be higher than four feet and must be ornamental. Right. The problem is they have a pool. And uh, law requires us to put something else around that pool besides a four-foot ornamental fence. And if the board has no objection, uh, he would like to allow uh, the proper statutory fence to go around that pool as opposed to <coughs> enforcing so moved. the requirement. I'll second the deed. Motion and second it. All those in favor? Okay. Okay. And last but not least... Um, I have the following statement on behalf of the board to, uh, to read. The, uh, the parties have reached a resolution on the matter of Silver versus the Town of Hampton. This resolution has been entered into to avoid the disruption that litigation has caused both parties and is not an admission or determination of liability or wrongdoing on either party. Close quote, period. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. I Old business. Whoop, whoop. Oh, ma'am. Oh, oh, that's right. Does anybody got any questions? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll give you a little leeway. <laughs> we had a letter from a nice uh, lady who lives uh, down uh, on River Ave regarding a complaint uh, 
or her next door neighbor who's on lease land who is causing significant problems yes. for her. Yes. Have we any leverage? I'm particularly concerned about the stink mm -hmm. and the storage of implements that could be taken to be work related. Uh, I, I don't think, but I'd be happy to stand corrected, that you have a right to run a business uh, out of your residential home on leased land property. Is there any way we can get relief for this poor person? You shouldn't have to put up with that foolishness. I have received a letter the other day, and, and uh, I'm going to refer it to council because uh, there are provisions within the lease land uh, program and within the individual leases. They're not to be used for commercial purposes in residential zones. And so, uh, the health factor here. Well, with and that's something that we have to talk to the health officer about. Um, <coughs> if, in fact, it violates either of those things, and, and, but we'd have to go investigate and, and talk to the individual and find out really what's going on um, and determine that. And uh, once we determine that, I believe that the council can give us a recommendation and the health officer can give us a recommendation, yeah. and that will come back to the board for your action. And bring a clothespin? Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's, it's intolerable to have situations like that in a neighborhood, particularly if you're the next door neighbor, and there ought to be some remedy to uh, either tamp down on the situation or resolve it completely. Yes, I agree. So I, I think that's inexcusable. Anything else? Uh, wait one second, because I was signing. I think I'm through with the pile. Um, Oh, uh, you mentioned conservation property or potential conservation property yes, when Donna Bennett was here, and I just want the board to know that I did go in and speak with the town planner after uh, reading through the uh, whole CIP presentation, and I asked him if in the section that shows town property, mm -hmm. if there would be a way to identify conservation property, just put an asterisk or something so that one could look at the property listing and see how much of that property is assigned to the conservation. Right. Uh, Actually, we could make a separate list within the list. Well, whatever is more convenient. I don't want to put anybody to a lot of trouble, but I think it would help people reviewing that if they could see the extent of the conservation of the land in the town that is now subject to the conservation. Right. That right. list comes out of my office, so it's not a big deal. We have it on computer. We, oh, can, okay. we can move it anytime we want. Okay. And uh, I just have not, this week, have not had yeah. the chance to yeah. uh, to go down and ask them if they have a list of all the individual pieces of oh, property. Okay. I know they do. Yeah. And when well, I get that list, we'll simply Jason it. thought Ray Ann would be able to she supply that. Yeah, because Jason's a nice person to pounce on, so I thought I'd run that by him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Mr. Waddell. What are we on, old business still? No, we're on uh, the town manager's report. Oh, no, no, fine. Thank you for the report. The, Thank you. The only thing I had was that that letter I received from the lady about the cemetery. Yes, and, uh, I have it here. Okay, I, I did pass that on to the cemetery trustees, so they are going to get it, but um, I told her that that was kind of what she had to do. And they did buy the vehicle? Yes, they did. They did. The vehicle's been taken care of. Okay. On the old business, we have a budget committee request of 42715 for guidance on a legal procedure, MLW. Yeah, I put that on uh, because I, I am concerned about having things like this keep sitting. Um, Chairman of the budget committee sent an email to council April 27th, and he turned that around immediately the same day and provided us um, with an email. Uh, the the email that she sent was asking a procedural question. Um, if you, you gentlemen may not remember, but Mark probably will. On October 30th, 2012, during budget hearings, uh, Chairman Latimer was the chairman at the time and I was the vice chairman, and the planning board uh, representative, Mr. Stephan, was in, and he was explaining to the budget committee that the budget committee had taken out, uh, that the planning board had taken out their legal money and uh, one other item to save money and be very nice for the budget process and the budget committee had been kicking around the idea of putting a line in the budget committee section for legal expenses mark happened to be present at that time and he explained that uh, if there was an issue whereby the budget committee needed to hire counsel 
that he certainly, if it was something he couldn't handle because, because of a conflict with the Board of Selectmen, he does have uh, outside counsel uh, money and funding uh, in the legal budget. I did, um, so the Budget Committee decided to not go ahead with inserting a line for legal expenses. However, I did caution them at the time, and all of this is clearly st uh, stated in the minutes. I did caution them that um, Attorney Gerald, however, as much as I respect him, didn't have the final say, because the final say on that would come to this board. And I was outvoted 12 to 1, but nevertheless, here we are. It doesn't appear that this is a specific request. It appears that it's a, a um, just a request as to procedure. So I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. We all, I'm sure, got a copy from council. And I, I don't think it's nice to let things like this hang. I think that the budget committee chairman or whoever deserves some kind of response. So I think that that's something uh, we should respond to uh, probably what Council said at the meeting on October 30th, 2012 would suffice. Uh, but I, I don't think we should leave things like that just sitting there. It's been over a month. Mr. Bean? Uh, I have no comment. <clears throat> Mr. Waddell? I don't think I have a comment. I mean, if they have a request, did they come to us with the request for, I mean, I don't understand. So you, you feel comfortable with Council just confirming what was stated? I mean, I don't know what what the request is. I yeah, mean, I don't know what the request is. Well, it's a procedural re request, as I read and it. And they had an answer, didn't they? No, that's why I'm bringing it up. Well, step in on and it is up to us to respond. I mean, we are, you know, it's going to get kicked over to us. So <clears throat> The uh, Budget Committee Chairman asked me... Uh, what is the procedure? And I, I indicated to her that she should come before this board with any specific request. Right. And the same question was asked of the NHMA, and they actually said the same thing, that it goes to this board. So she should come to us for a request. So, so, so there has been an answer. But I think, well, I... So come with a request, and then we can answer the request. That seems simple to me. Okay, so I, I think that uh, the town attorney responded. <coughs> Well, okay. and the procedure would be to come. And if you're the budget committee and you cut your own budget, there's no money. There's no money. And then if you need it, in addition to talking to the town attorney and the New Hampshire Municipal Association that we pay $16,000 a year, you yep. get two legal opinions. Um, I don't know how much more we can do. All right. So anything on the new business? New business, yes. I would like to make a... a a motion, I guess, or I don't know how I do it, that on High Street, if you notice, from Route 1 to Mill Road, it's 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. From Mill Road to the beach, it's 35 miles an hour, which makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, so, he's looking for common sense. So <laughs> what I would, well, I'm, I'm going to make a, a motion that we reduce the speed limit to 30 miles an hour on all of High Street. Not a bad idea. Actually. I talked to uh, the town manager about it, and he said it's up to the selectman. Yeah. So moved. Or would you like to motion? I'm sorry. It's, it, it, you want to reduce to 30? Can, for you, the go to, can you go to 25? <laughs> we can. <laughs> no. All right, um, 30 then. I, I make that motion that we reduce second. to 30. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Done. It's reduced. But that was a hard deal. Good one. job, Jim. <laughs> Anything else on a new bill? I. Uh, um, well, we're doing, yeah. Um, just, I have one more. You'll love me for this. Uh, right after the town meeting, we received a, a request from um, Detective Gilroy, re representing the police unions, uh, uh, asking if we would be prepared to sit down and negotiate as their contracts expire in March of 2016. As far as I can see, there was no response sent to that, and we have now received a follow-up from Council for the unions. Uh, is it uh, reasonable for us to please respond with just a generic, you know, an, an acknowledgement or something uh, saying that we'd be happy to negotiate at such and such a time? I just think it's, it's rude not to uh, Well, I think respond. it's time we did, and I, I think it was overlooked. 
that's for sure. So. Well, I asked about that uh, probably uh, sometime in April and got no response. So, so I just are we are we time now to start looking at negotiating with them? Well, it's you the, may do that at any time following town meeting. That's not the question. The question is, it's rude not to respond to somebody's right. inquiry. Right. So it is up to the board. Does the board want to send a? I would move that we respond immediately to the letter and commence negotiations uh, no later than immediately. I'll second that. Thank you. Immediately works. All those in favor? Okay. And I believe Detective Gilroy is still the president of the union. Yeah. Yes, he is. Okay. Thank you. Nothing, sir. Now, you okay. want to move yeah. that we take this up in non-public, Fred, or how do you want to... <clears throat> I, I think if, if uh, now I gotta find my you, copy you may wish to do that because I think there's some things in there that you need to resolve. Okay. okay. And I think that deals with individuals, so you need to do that. Um, so you'd be resuming the non-public session that we started but didn't that, finish upstairs? That we be, before, you do, before you do, however, I've received a request that came through um, Parker Recreation. Um, there's going to be a new modular home built over on oh, uh, yes, one of our streets, Island Path. Island Path. And they would like um, to store the three sections temporarily mm -hmm. starting at 7.30 in the morning and remove them before noontime to, to build the house mm -hmm. uh, over on 180, I think it's 183 Island Path. Yeah. Um, 188 Island Path, excuse me. I don't see a reason not to do that. It's Wednesday, June 3rd. Uh, which is this coming Wednesday. Uh, the parking lot is not in general use this time of the year. It mm -hmm. makes sense to accommodate a, a citizen who needs yeah. to have yep. assistance. So, so I just want to let you know I was go going to <coughs> grant that unless the board okay. told me not to. Good. And I if, did if, read if I could just, I didn't see in that uh, a requirement for a certificate of insurance. They have, have indicated they have a certificate of insurance. Thank for you, us. sir. Good. Anything else on the new business? <laughs> uh, actually, I believe. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there was um, the board wished to address the uh, the issue of the uh, protest of the uh, awards made by the board on March 23, 2015, ah, yes. okay. as to uh, awarding the bids for solid waste disposal and waste hauling. Okay. If I may be recognized for a motion, I'll be happy to read it. Sure. Okay. I hereby move to confirm the votes of the board taken at its meeting on March 23, 2015 to award the contract for solid waste disposal to Eco Maine for solid to Eco Maine and the contract for waste hauling to Troiano Waste Services based on the prices originally bid by each in the separate bidding process. This was not a combined bid process, as solid waste was bid on in response to the Southeast Regional Refuse Disposal District process on June 16, 2014, and the waste hauling bidding having occurred in December of 2014 in response to an invitation to bid from the town. The acceptance of these two separate bid results is in the best interest of the town, and EcoMaine's original bid is the lowest on a per ton basis, even under its original bid price, and Troiano's hauling bid is the lowest for EcoMaine's location in Portland. Factors beyond price are involved, such as the safety of personnel and vehicles and repair costs as to the current disposal site and the reliability of hauling services experienced with Troiano for the last two years. I second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, well, there's a little duplication in that first sentence, the yep. solid waste oh, disposal, yeah. yep. and I've taken it out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sweet briar rules. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to have, we don't need to have a motion to go into a non-public because we we re we you recess that and we do that. that. So we will so resume the non-public. Any closing comments? No, sir. Um, wait a minute. I had any on. Oh, I have one. You're not going to like me, but that's all right. I'll survive. I still think with the volume of work we have on our plates, we should at least try to fit in some extra meetings. 
Uh, for example, I brought up the matter of the problems in the numbered streets in North Beach and the south of Boar's Head, et cetera, last fall. And we had all those nice people come in, and we're not sitting down till June 15th to go over what we need to do to give some relief <coughs> to those people. I think we have an awful lot on our plate, and I really um, object to the every other Monday off in the summer. And you're probably not going to agree with me, but I'm going to say it because I firmly believe that we have a lot of work to do and a very short time in which to do it. Thank you. Closing comments? Negative, sir. Negative. So I will ask for a motion to adjourn. A uh, uh, motion yes. to adjourn. Subject to, subject going. to the going into a uh, recess to non-public. I'll okay. make that. At, at what time? At I'll second. 7.55. Okay. All right. I All second. All in favor? Okay. Yeah. Good.